Hello and welcome to today's video. What we'll study today is the patent process. We'll study important elements of the patent process and maybe we'll dive deeper into them in the later lecture series. So let's begin with the patent grant process in India. In India, what we say is the grant process can be divided into several stages and there are four important stages. It begins with filing, then it goes into publication, then it goes into examination and then it goes into grant and the post grant process. So you need to remember these four important stages because sometimes the questions may come to arrange the sections in a particular order. So if this is the process of getting a grant, which begins with filing, publication, examination, and grant and the post-grant process, generally the sections are also placed in this manner only. So if you know these stages, you will be able to arrange the sections in the right way if any question related to that comes. So let us try to understand what is filing. So in India, there are two types of application, which are provisional application and complete application. So difference between provisional and complete application is provisional application is kind of a temporary patent application. So when you file a provisional application, there may be a scenario that your applicant makes certain changes in the uh, in the patent application so when he completes those changes we can file a complete specification also another thing which is important to remember is a provisional specification may or may not include claims but a complete specification will always have claims in them for now we need to understand that claims are something on which we get the legal protection. If claims are, if we do not have claims in the patent application, we will not get legal protection anywhere. So claims are important to get legal protection. So claims are always present in the complete specification without claims, our application cannot be considered by the examiner and it won't be processed any further. So always remember, if your invention is not fully complete and you want to secure a priority date, that means you want to want patent examiners to know that you have filed a patent on this date and because you have filed it, the prior art that is required to check novelty would be considered from the date before this date. So all the prior arts or the state of the art or public knowledge which is available from till today's date will be considered as prior art. After today's date, it might not be considered as a prior art. So filing uh, to secure priority dates sometimes becomes important if your invention is not fully developed. So for that, you can take advantage of provisional application, but if you file a provisional application, you need to file a complete specification within 12 months. If you do not file a pro complete specification within 12 months, your application will be deemed to be abandoned. The examiner will not consider your application and it will be considered as abandoned. Next, we have publication. So publication means that your patent application will get published in a journal. When a patent application gets published in a journal, what happens is anybody can go and access your application and they'll get to know that you have filed the application. Now, why is publication important? Sometimes this question may come, why is publication important? So one is as you are aware that this application will get published, everybody can go and read that this is your patent. And maybe if they want to read it for the purpose of knowledge, they can read it. If, they, if somebody else files the patent on the same technology, then you can tell them that you have already filed a patent and this is the patent number which is available. So they will not get a patent on this. 
So one aspect is this. Other aspect is, for example, there is a, an infringement suit once the patent is granted. So in that infringement suit, when the court calculates the damages, the court will calculate the damages from the date of publication. The damages are not calculated from the date of filing. The damages are calculated from the date of publication. So this also becomes very important that from which date the damages are calculated. Damages are calculated from the date of publication. Another thing that you need to remember here is publication happens automatically within uh, the publication happens automatically after 18 months of filing. So according to the act, it is written the publication happens after 18 months and within one month. That means between 18 to 19 months somewhere the publication will happen. But if we want to make this process early, we can file a request for early publication. We'll study this in more detail when we study a publication with forms and requirement sections. But this lecture is just for an overview that what is publication, what is filing, what is examination and what is grant and the post grant process. So publication happens automatically between 18 to 19 months. But if we want to expedite the process, we can file for a request for early publication, which, which when filed, the publication happens within one month of filing that request. So the process becomes faster. So next we have examination. First thing to note here is examination will not happen unless your patent application is published. Examination will happen only after the patent application is published. Second, th uh, second uh, important point here is publication happens automatically if we, file, if we do not file a request for publication. But for examination to happen, we should file a request for examination. If we do not file a request for examination, the examination will not happen. It does not happen automatically unless we file a request for examination. So filing, which is also called RFE, filing an RFE is a requirement. This needs to be filed within 48 months from date of priority. So whatever is your priority date, Within 48 months, we need to file a request for examination. Then only examination of your process, uh, application will happen. In certain special cases, which we'll study in detail in the coming lectures, expedited examination can be filed. What is the advantage? In certain special cases, for example, if one of the applicant of your invention is a woman, then expedited examination can be filed. If an ex expedited examination is filed, the process of examination happens faster. So that is the advantage. Still, examination cannot happen without publication. So if you are expediting your examination process, you should also file a request for early publication. If you do not file a request for early publication and you file a request for expedited examination. Examination will not happen till expiry of 18 months because your application would not be published. So therefore, filing a request for early publication becomes also important when we file a request for expedited examination. So in the examination process, what happens is the examiner will review your application and specifically the claims. Based on that, he will give you an examination report, which is called first examination report. So previously it was called first examination report in our act, in our act also. But in current act and rules, I think they have mentioned first statement of objections. So that is nothing but the first examination report. So first statement of objections or first examination report can be used interchangeably. So don't, don't get confused between the terminologies. 
so what happens is ideally when you submit uh, when we get a first examination report from the patent office we need to file the response within 6 months of getting that report that is the timeline given by the patent office but this timeline can be extended further by 3 months by filing form 4 but you need to remember that it cannot be filed after expiry of 6 months so if you need to take an ex ob an extension this extension should be taken before expiry of 6 months only after that you would not be able to take the extension and the uh, the application will be considered as withdrawn so filing a request for examination is mandatory and filing the reply has to be done within 6 months if you are not filing a reply within 6 months then within 6 months you should seek an extension for filing a reply and that extension can be given for a maximum of 3 months it cannot be extended any further so when we do amendments and we file a reply then the examiner will reconsider our application he will then he may issue a second examination report and that needs to be complied with in certain cases he may not issue a second examination report he may directly give a hearing then that hearing needs to be complied with so whatever may be the scenario according to that we need to process the examination we'll study the sections of examination also in the coming up lectures but this lecture is mainly to give you an overview that what happens in filing what happens in publication what happens in examination and what is the grant and the post grant process so if we comply with the requirements of patent office our application will get a grant if we do not comply with the requirements of patent office then our application will be considered as abandoned so what happens after grant of the patent application after grant of the patent application you can leverage a lot of things for example if somebody is copying your invention you can file an infringement suit during the application or after the application you can get into the licensing deals of your technology so these are some of the advantages of getting a grant but we'll study the post grant process also in detail when we uh, after in the coming up lectures so here one important aspect to remember is oppositions so apart from filing publication examination and grant and the post grant process we need to study opposition in our patent act we have two types of patent oppositions which are mentioned in section 25 but detailed process as i said we will study in the coming up lectures so in oppositions we have two types of opposition one is the pre grant opposition other is the post grant opposition so according to the pre grant opposition a pre grant opposition can be filed any time after publication of application and any time before grant of the patent so within this timeline i can go for a pre grant opposition and when i can file a post grant opposition the date on which publication of grant of your patent application happens after that within 12 months i can file a post grant opposition so opposition is also a process where a third party can come up and say because i have a, a xyz reasons because of these reasons you should not get a patent and that's why i am opposing your patent so this is a brief overview of the opposition where we have two types of opposition the pre grant opposition and the post grant oppositions so which we'll study in the coming lectures so this is the fair overview of the patent grant process and we'll study this section in details in further lectures if you have any questions feel free to write in the comments and we'll be happy to answer them Thank you.